Frisk sighed in relief upon stepping into the house. It was warm, and she could feel the feeling returning to her body. There was something relaxing about the house, despite the bizarreties that were evident in it. A prime example was the music that came from nowhere, and yet was always playing at the house. Sans's theme was what Papyrus would always call it, saying that his brother was the one who created the racket. Only issue was, it played even when Sans wasn't in the building. That was only one of the peculiarities, though. Strange flashing colors and sounds were constantly coming from under Sans's door. A rock that Papyrus was convinced was Sans's pet sat on the large table, and Papyrus was constantly feeding it all sorts of desserts. A sock was always next to the TV with a lot of sticky notes stuck to it. The sock was replaced with a new one every week or so. And a book, a really unsettling book, lay on the end of the table next to the large couch that sat in the middle of the room. It was a joke book with a physics book inside, with a joke book inside, with a physics book inside of that. An endless cycle that defied all concepts of logic. Frisk plopped down onto the couch, still somewhat out of it, and stared absentmindedly at the powered-off large plasma screen TV. Sighing, beginning to regain her senses, she whispered, I saw a shoe. From the surface, I think. It would be gone by the time the storm ended, though. She knew how her luck worked, after all. Megan, however, was not paying attention. She had other things on her mind. Something was off. She'd felt it the moment she walked into the house. Nothing looked out of the ordinary, but actions weren't occurring that really should have been. They had stepped into the house and, as of yet, were completely unacknowledged. Sure, she hadn't been invited here, but Frisk had. Sun should have been waiting by the front door to make sure she got through the blizzard safely. More than that, though, Papyrus was off. Seemed every time they entered the house, he would come barreling down the stairs, demanding another platonic date with Frisk. This time, he hadn't even left his room. Instead, he could be heard attempting to record some kind of song that was basically just him saying some of his favorite lines to music. Sans should have told him Frisk was coming over for a few days, Megan thought warily. He should be down here asking her out on a date or preparing a meal for her to eat. The fact that he wasn't could only mean one thing. Sans hadn't taken the time to let him know which was very, very un like That was when her subconscious registered the sounds coming from the couch. Frisk had been talking. Something about a shoe. On the surface. Putting her unease out of her mind, Megan turned back to Frisk. I'm sorry, I was distracted. What were you saying? I said there's a, a shoe on the surface outside, covered in snow. It was very clear that Frisk was frantic and unsettled, which made it a little hard to follow what she was saying. Shoes? So what? Megan replied, absolutely bewildered. She glanced down at her Indiana Jones-styled footwear. I know that shoes aren't very common down here, Frisk, but just because you see ones that look like ones from above ground doesn't mean anything. I really don't see why that is worth freaking out about. She paused. Do you know who they belong to or something? Frisk breathed in and out, forcing herself to calm down. It wasn't the shoe, Megan. It was the kind of shoe. It was the brand. Nobody down here is going to end up with a brand of shoes like that. Megan's forehead creased, and Frisk shook her head. Nike. She looked down at the carpet eyes running along with the wiggling design that ran across the floor. How were their shoes from the surface down here? More to the point, 
what in the world was one doing just lying underneath the Christmas tree in the middle of town? Considering how quickly it had been buried, there was no way it could have been there long when she saw it, meaning it had been abandoned during the blizzard. It was very unlikely somebody would abandon a shoe during a time like that, which meant that they had been forced to. She held her hands to her head, trying to fit together the confusing jigsaw puzzle of questions. After a few minutes, she decided that she simply didn't have enough information, and it would be a waste of time to sit and conjecture any longer. So she stood up. Glancing at the pocket watch that Papyrus had given her for her birthday a year ago, she noted the time at 9.42 p.m. Considering how she'd left Grilby's at nine, stood for ten minutes or so staring at where the shoe had been, and then walked the five minutes to Sansa's house, they'd been here for about half an hour. She glanced up the stairs. Sansa and Papyrus hadn't come down yet. She shrugged. Papyrus was probably just super focused on getting his song right, and Sans was... well... Sans. Hungry? She asked Megan, who nodded. Despite his terrible beginnings, Papyrus had gone from one of the worst cooks Frisk had ever laid eyes on to one of the best. She guessed that was what happened when you cooked the same meal four to five times a day. Every day. For five years. He also cooked other things during that time, insisting that six meals a day was the proper amount and anybody who argued was dead wrong. All in all, he spent somewhere between three to four hours every day cooking. With any luck, he'd leftovers in the fridge. He usually did. Papyrus! Frisk called up the stairs with a smile. Megan and I are going to take some of your leftover spaghetti, okay? There was the sound of something crashing up in Papyrus's room, and both Megan and Frisk winced. Frisk, is that you? You didn't eat at work? The door to Papyrus's room came crashing open, and the tall skeleton came bounding down the stairs at breakneck speed to meet them. What are you doing here? Even the great Papyrus didn't know you were planning on coming over. How long have you been here? I made a new dish. It's called lasagna. Undine told the great papyrus the other day that it tasted delicious. He has some in the fridge. However, he stopped awkwardly the moment Megan came into view. Then he moved, as he was forced to to keep himself from falling the rest of the way down the stairs. Hello, Megan, he said with a softened and awkward voice. It was rather strange but he always became this way when the girl he assumed to be Sansa's showed up. Sansa's in his room. Hasn't come out for hours. He needs to eat. Go get him, please. Megan nodded and sprinted up the stairs. Frisk was thoroughly confused as she watched all of the going-ons. Something Papyrus had said was bothering her. He had specifically said that he had no idea she was coming over. But Sans had basically told her that Papyrus was inviting her over, so it shouldn't really have been surprising when she showed up. Weird stuff was always happening at Sans's house, though. Best to ignore it. A new food? Frisk said excitedly. Awesome. I'll heat up the oven. She dashed into the kitchen and paused. No matter how many times she entered the room, she just couldn't get used to the 20-foot-tall kitchen sink. Papyrus had designed it that way so he could hold his secret stash of bones underneath. She'd never bothered to tell him that it would be difficult to find a more obvious place than that. A shiver ran down her spine as she stood there, a reminder that her body temperature hadn't yet reached its proper heat. It was a good 30-plus degrees colder than normal outside, probably almost negative 10. My, uh, bones are rattling. Papyrus poked his head into the kitchen and looked at her. Nope, the great Papyrus cannot hear your bones, and he has excellent hearing. Above them, they could hear the sound of Megan pounding on the door, but without any hint of a response. Frisk couldn't help but feel sorry for her friend. 
Megan was always trying to get closer to Sans, but as far as Frisk could tell, Sans always kept Megan at arm's length. Turning her attention back to the matter at hand, Frisk turned the dials on the oven. Papyrus opened up the fridge and pulled out his lasagna masterpiece with a smile. Hand it here, Frisk motioned, slipping on an oven mitt. Papyrus complied and Frisk slid the lasagna into the oven. Answering Papyrus's earlier question, she said, I didn't eat at work because of the snowstorm. Wanted to get here as quickly as possible. Sans, if you do not open this door right now, I swear to the gods I am going to break it down. Even from the floor below, Frisk was taken aback by the very intensity and volume of the declaration. Papyrus, on the other hand, looked quite impressed. After double-checking to make sure the oven was right, he looked up in the direction of the voice with pride. She is even louder than the great Papyrus, and he is loud. At that moment, they could hear the sound of Sansa's door swinging open, a slight yelp of surprise from Megan, the sound of the door closing again, and then silence. Papyrus and Frisk looked at each other, headed out of the kitchen and up the stairs to see what was going on. The upstairs was small. There was a hallway with doors leading to Papyrus's room, Sansa's room, and a giant poster of a bone in between. Other than that, the hall was empty. Megan was nowhere to be seen. Guess she's in Sansa's room now, Frisk said as the two made their way back downstairs to the living room. Wonder what they're up to. The great Papyrus has no idea. He doesn't want to have any idea. And he talks in the third person. Frisk said with a teasing wink. Then she blinked. Say, Papyrus, you were the one who invited me over for the weekend, right? The great Papyrus did, Papyrus pondered. Then he grinned confidently. Yes, of course the great Papyrus did. He hasn't gone on a platonic date with you for three whole days. Do you want to walk to the theater through a blizzard like totally awesome monsters and people do? Frisk found herself blushing ever so slightly, but she hid it just as quickly as it appeared. She was a master of faking. She could fake this, too. After all, platonic dates were platonic for both of them. She didn't have any feelings for the skeleton, and he didn't have any feelings for her. Life was simpler that way. She didn't have to let anybody in. True, we haven't been on a platonic date for a few days. She said, somewhat absent-mindedly. Papyrus was acting odd. Well, odder than normal. Or was that just her imagination? It was sometimes hard to tell with him. Huh. Maybe it ran in the family? As the lasagna heated up, Frisk couldn't help but begin to relax. The smell of Papyrus's cooking always put her into a good mood. It didn't really matter if he was being odder than normal, did it? No need to get bent out of shape from something so unimportant. She'd just roll with it. Maybe we should wait until the blizzard stops before going outside? She glanced out the window as she said it. Her body temperature hadn't recovered fully from the last trek yet. Nonsense! The epic trek through a blizzard is half of the adventure, Frisk. You don't look half as great trekking to a theater and not a blizzard. And the Great Papyrus is the very definition of greatness. That is why he is known as the Great Papyrus. He held up his hands to the sky now, as if acknowledging the applause of thousands of screaming fans. Fans that clearly only existed in his head. <laughs>